In this video, we will be discussing about the anatomy of the kidneys. So, we will discuss about the parts of the kidney and the location of the kidney, the shape, size of kidneys. And we will be discussing the relations of the kidney. That is a much more important part in this video. And we will end this section with the discussion of coverings of the kidney. So, so first uh, we have an introduction to the kidney. So, what are these kidneys actually? Kidneys are actually a pair of excretory organs which is situated in the posterior abdominal wall. So, if you look at the posterior abdominal wall, so this is roughly the vertebral column. This is a rough diagram of the vertebral column. So, on either side of the vertebral column, you can see a pair of bean shaped structures like this. So, this pair of bean shaped structures which are located on either side of the a vertebral column in the posterior abdominal wall behind the peritoneum is known as a kidney. So this is a ureter which is carrying urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. So what you are seeing here is a pair of kidneys which is located on either side of the vertebral column in the posterior abdominal wall behind the peritoneum. So what are these kidneys? Kidneys are a pair of excretory organs so which is situated in the posterior abdominal wall so that is very important so the situation of or location of the kidneys is in the posterior abdominal wall so that is the important part here posterior abdominal wall So, and with, in relation to the peritoneum, what is the relation of the kidney? It is related posteriorly or behind the peritoneum. It is located behind the peritoneum. So, that is the introduction to the kidneys. So, if you look at the external feature of the kidney, so, our next discussion is on the external features or parts of the kidney. So, if you look at the kidney, so it is pair of bean shaped structure like this. So it is located, it is arranged like this. So these are the two kidneys here. And you can see the ureter here. So if you look at the external feature of the kidney, you can see that it has got an upper pole here. So this is the upper pole of the kidney and it has got a lower pole. So which are the poles of the kidney? Poles are, it has got an upper pole. So we know that the upper pole of the kidney is broad. It is broad. And this upper pole is in close contact with which structure? It is in close contact with the suprarenal gland. So the suprarenal gland is located on the upper pole like this in the kidney. So the upper pole is in contact with the suprarenal gland. And there is a lower pole also. And what about the lower pole of the kidney? The lower pole of the kidney is pointed. So the upper pole is broad and it is in contact with the suprarenal gland. Whereas the lower pole is pointed. So that is about the poles of the kidney. Now, 
can know that you uh, can see that uh, on the anterior surface that is can see that uh, the surface which is seen anteriorly that is the anterior surface so and if you go posteriorly you can see a posterior surface so which are the two surfaces of the kidney surfaces of the kidney are the anterior surface anterior surface and the peculiarity of anterior surface is that it is irregular okay and it has got a posterior surface posterior surface now the posterior surface is flat so it is often difficult to identify the anterior and posterior aspect of the kidney by looking at the surfaces so the proper way to do this to ex is to examine the structures present in the hilum so if you look at the arrangement of the structures in the hilum of the kidney you will be able to correctly identify the anterior and posterior surface of the kidney we will be discussing about that now so which are the two surface anterior and posterior surface and you can see two borders here you can see a lateral border here so this is convex and you can see a medial border here which is concave so and if you look at the medial border at the middle aspect at the middle part of the medial border you can see a depression here so that depression is known as the hilus or hila so which are the two borders so borders are lateral border and the lateral border is convex and it has got a medial border and the medial border is concave and has a depression which is located in the middle part known as the hilum of the kidney so that is about the external features of the kidney so kidney is located in the posterior abdominal wall behind the peritoneum on either side of the vertebral column and if you look at the external feature you can see a broad upper pole which is in contact with the suprarenal gland and a pointed lower pole here so and you can have two surfaces that is the anterior surface and behind that you have the posterior surface the anterior surface is irregular and posterior surface is flat but in fact it is very difficult to identify the anterior and posterior surface just by looking at the kidney so in order to identify the anterior and posterior surface you have to have you should have a close look at the structures in the passing through the hilum and its arrangement so by using that you will be able to correctly identify the anterior and posterior surface now besides this you have two borders that is the lateral border which is convex and the medial border which is concave and the medial border has got a depression in the middle part which is known as the hilum so uh, the structures passing through the hilum of the kidney and its arrangement is discussed here so i have said you that just now i have told you that uh, it is possible to identify the anterior and posterior surface of the kidney just by looking at the arrangement of structures in the hilum of the kidney so how the structures or uh, which all structures are passing through the hilum of the kidney and what is its arrangement so if you look at the transverse section through the kidney here at the lumbar region so so this is the transverse section of the kidney so this is a kidney so on what you see here as the anterior aspect so here you can see the anterior aspect this is the posterior aspect we will now see the structures which are arranged from anterior to posterior aspect so most anteriorly the structure which is passing through the hilum is the renal vein so the renal vein is passing through the hilum anteriorly so anterior most structure is the renal vein so which is that structure it is the renal vein so and this is draining into the inferior vena cava so you have the ivc here now 
just posterior to the renal vein you have the renal artery so you have the renal artery which is passing through the eye so this is the renal artery branch of aorta here that is abdominal aorta here so you are having the aorta here so which is that structure uh, posterior to the renal vein there is a renal artery artery and posterior to the renal artery which is the other structure passing through the hilum of the kidney that is the renal pelvis so you have the renal pelvis here that is nothing but the expanded upper end of the ureter so this is the renal pelvis so posterior most structure is the renal pelvis so this is the normal arrangement of structure in the hilum of the kidney from anterior to posterior aspect the arrangement is can remember it using a mnemonic vap vap that is v stands for renal vein a stands for renal artery and p stands for renal pelvis so this is the arrangement from anterior to anterior to posterior aspect in the hilum of the kidney so by looking at the arrangement of these structures in the hilum of the kidney you can easily identify the anterior and posterior surfaces of the kidney so that is the important point now we look at the location of the kidney that is the location of the kidney with respect to the various abdominal quadrants so i uh, will draw the uh, kidneys here and look at the location of the kidney So if you draw the kidneys here, so this is the right kidney. So the right kidney is as it is slightly lower level compared to the left kidney. So we can draw the ureter here. So the, uh, this is the location of the kidneys here. You can see the right kidney here. You can see the left kidney here. So this is the right side. This is the left side. You can see the ureter which is extending from the kidney. So this is how the kidney is located. So if you are drawing the transpyloric line here. So you are drawing the transpyloric line here. So if you are drawing the transpyloric line, it is passing through the upper part of the hilus of the right kidney and the lower part of the hilus of the left kidney. So this is the transpyloric plane. You are seeing the transpyloric plane. It is passing through the upper part of hilus. You can see it is passing through the upper part of hilus of right kidney. and lower part of hilus of left kidney
so this is because the right kidney is at a lower level than the left kidney right kidney is at a lower level than the left kidney so vertically what is the extent of this kidneys it is extending from the upper border of the 12th thoracic vertebrae to the center of body of a third lumbar vertebrae so the location in general the location of the kidney that is vertically what is the extent vertically it is extending from the upper border of T12 vertebrae to the center of body of third lumbar vertebrae that is T12 to L3 is the extent of the kidney so the but the right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney and the left kidney is slightly nearer to the median plane than the right kidney that is the difference only difference so that is the uh, location but the important point is the quadrant of the abdomen in which uh, the kidneys are located so we can see the transtubercular line here and if you consider this you can see the kidney is located in the epigastric region this is the epigastric region part is lying in the epigastric region and also in the hypochondriac regions and also in the lumbar so this is the lumbar part lumbar region and a part is lying in the umbilical region also so part lying in the epigastrium hypochondrium the lumbar region and also the umbilical region so which are the quadrants abdominal quadrants in which the kidneys are located located so kidneys occupy which all quadrants of the abdomen is very important which all quadrants are occupied by the kidneys first one you can see the epigastrium and you can see the hypochondrium and you can see the lumbar region and also umbilical so kidneys extends in all in the all the all of this abdominal quadrants so important point from this section is the location of the kidneys location is in the posterior abdominal wall posterior to the peritoneum on either side of the vertebral column located in the abdominal quadrants like epigastrium hypochondrial lumbar and umbilical region and um, it is vertically extending from the upper border of T12 vertebrae to the center of body of L3 vertebrae. But the important point is that the right kidney is at a slightly lower the level than the left kidney. So if you are drawing the transpyloric line, it will pass through the upper border of hilum of right kidney and the lower border of hilum of left kidney. So that is the difference between the position of right and left kidney. And a few words about the size of the kidney. So the size of each kidney it is 11 cm long and what is the breadth it is 6 cm broad and 3 cm thickness so that is the dimensions of the kidney and on on an average what is the weight of the kidney so weight of the kidney is 150 gram in males and it is 135 gram in females and the color is reddish brown so what is the uh, long axis of the kidney if you draw the kidney so if the kidney is drawn like this you can if you draw the axis long axis of the kidney the axis is directed downwards and laterally like this so the axis of the kidney is directed downwards and laterally so the axis is long axis of the kidney is directed downwards and laterally so that the upper pole is near to the midline and the lower pole 
is slightly away from the midline so the upper pole is closer to the midline so the long axis is directed downwards and laterally and the transverse axis is directed laterally and backwards so that is the axis okay so so far we have discussed about the size of the kidneys the location okay now we'll go into the important part that is the relations of the kidney so while discussing the relation of the kidney we know that we have two kidneys that is right and left so first we'll discuss the common relations that is the relations which are common to both the kidneys right and left kidneys so if you draw the kidneys you are drawing the kidneys like this so the upper form of a kidney is related to the suprarenal gland so the upper pole is related to the suprarenal gland on either side so upper pole is related to upper pole of both kidneys is related to the suprarenal gland so and what about the lower pole what is the location of lower pole it is 2.5 cm above the iliac crest so that is the relations of the upper pole of both kidneys now if you look at the medial border of this kidney what is the relation of the medial border So if you look at the upper part of the medial border, it is related to the suprarenal gland in the upper part. So medial border is related to the suprarenal gland above the hilus and above the hilus you can see the suprarenal gland like this. So above hilus you have the suprarenal gland. So and below the hilus you can see which structure that is below the hilus you are able to see the ureter. So medial border is related below the hilus to the ureter. So these are the relations of the medial border and upper pole of both kidneys. Now we will discuss about the posterior relation of the kidney that is very important. So here I am drawing the kidneys. So this is the posterior aspect of the kidney. This is the posterior aspect of the kidney. We will draw the structures which are related here. So the first structure which I am going to draw is the diaphragm. So it is related to the diaphragm in the upper part. So this structure is the diaphragm. Uh, and you have uh, the rib here or also you have the rib here that is if it is the right kidney it is related to the 12th rib only and if it is the left kidney it is related to the 11th and the 12th rib because the right kidney is lower it is related only to the 12th rib okay so and below that you are able to see two structures here the medial arcuate ligament and the lateral arcuate ligament so these are located here it is related to the I am just drawing the relations of the posterior surface of the kidney so the posterior surface is related to these structures so we can see the medial arcuate ligament and there is a lateral arcuate ligament so this is the medial arcuate ligament And this is the lateral arcuate ligament.
so and if you draw the muscles here from medial to lateral which are the muscles here so medially you have which muscle so this muscle which i have drawn here is the psoas major muscle psoas major muscle the next muscle lateral to that you have the quadratus lumborum so this is the quadratus lumborum quadratus lumborum Now if you go laterally you can see which muscle here that is the transosis it is related to which muscle that is transosis abdominis transosis abdominis so and you are able to see some vessels and now here which are also very important So if you go superiorly, you can see the subcostal vessels and now here. And the subcostal, this is the subcostal vessel. And below that you have the subcostal nerve here. So which is the structure? Subcostal vessel and nerve. So if you go further down inferiorly, you can see uh, two other nerves here that is the iliohypogastric nerve and ilioinguinal nerve. So here you are able to see the iliohypogastric nerve. And below that you are able to see the ilioinguinal nerve. Ilioinguinal. So one difference between the right and left kidney regarding the posterior relation is that the right kidney it is related posteriorly to the 12th rib only whereas the left kidney being at a higher level than the left right kidney so the left kidney is at a slightly higher level compared to the right kidney so it is related posteriorly to the 11th and the 12th rib sorry so the right kidney is related to the 12th rib only whereas the left kidney is related to the 11th and the 12th rib so these are the posterior relations of the kidney so which are the posterior relations the diaphragm 11th and the 12th rib in the case of left kidney and the 12th rib alone in the case of right kidney medial arcuate ligament lateral arcuate ligament the three muscles from medial to lateral are psoas major quadratus lumborum and the transosis abdominis which are the nerves subcostal nerve ilio hypogastric nerve ilio inguinal and the vessel is a subcostal vessel so these are the rela posterior relations now we'll discuss the anterior relation of the kidney so when discussing the anterior relation anterior relation is different for the right and left kidney so now i'm drawing the right kidney here So I am drawing the left kidney here. So I am I am drawing the relations here. So first of all, we will discuss about the right kidney relation, anterior relation. So on the right aspect, you have uh, you know that there is a liver. So one thing which you have to know is that it is related superiorly to the suprarenal gland. So on the anterior aspect also you are able to see the suprarenal gland in the upper pole and on the anterior surface. So this is the suprarenal gland. So this is the left kidney. So if you look at the right kidney here, you can see the hepatic area here so before drawing the hepatic area i will draw the duodenal area which is occupied by the second part of the duodenum 
so this much part is occupied by the second part of the diurna so this much part which i have drawn in orange color is occupied by the second part of diurna now we can see the hepatic area which is seen here which is occupied by the very top of the liver here so this much area is occupied by the liver so this is a hepatic area and below that you, are, you can see the and area which is related to the hepatic pressure of the colon so this much area that is this area is related to the hepatic pressure of the colon hepatic pressure of the colon so and the rest of the area that is a small area here that is related to the jejuna okay that is known as the jejunal area so you have the colic area the jejunal area area related to second part of duodenum and the hepatic area here on the right kidney so these are the anterior relations of the right kidney here on the left kidney you can see the suprarenal gland which is located here so you can see an important structure here now spleen is located here so you can see the splenic area here so this much was the splenic area so this is the splenic area so and you know the pancreas is located here so the pancreas is located here like this so that was the pancreatic area so in between this area so you can know that there is a gastric area here so this small area is for the gastric area gastric area is located here so rest of the area is same that is you have the colic area here so this area is for the so this area is for the mm -hmm. jejunum that is the jejunal area and this small area this area is for the colic area so it is related to the splenic flexor of the colon and the descending colon as it is in the left side it is related to the splenic flexor and the descending colon so on the left side important relations are the spleen the gastric area the pancreas and also the jejunum and the splenic flexor of the colon and the descending colon on the left side so so on the right kidney which are the structures which are covered by the peritoneum so peritoneum covered structures on the right kidney are out of these relations a hepatic and intestinal surfaces are covered by peritoneum so if you look at the left kidney left side which all areas are covered by the peritoneum that is out of this the gastric splenic and jejunal surfaces are covered by the peritoneum so on the left kidney the two 
surface that is hepatic and in the sinus surfaces are covered by peritoneum on the on the right kidney the two surfaces are covered by the peritoneum on the left kidney we have three surfaces which are covered by the peritoneum that is the gastric splenic and the jejunal area are covered by the peritoneum so that is the difference now we look into the coverings of the kidney so we look at the coverings of the kidney here i will draw a diagram here this is the vertebrae We can draw some uh, muscles here. So one muscle which is located that is medially is the psoas major muscle. And just later to that you have the quadratus lumborum muscle. And you are having the trans transversalis fascia here. Okay, this is being covered by the thoracolumbar fascia. So, which is this structure? This is the psoas major, and this is the quadratus lumborum. And this is the transversalis fascia. So we are able to see the external oblique and internal oblique uh, also here, external oblique and internal oblique. So you can know that uh, this fascia which I have drawn in green color was the thoracolumbar fascia, thoracolumbar fascia. So I will be drawing the kidney here. This is the transfer section here. So this is the kidney. So the first covering of the kidney is the fibrous capsule. The first covering is the fibrous capsule. So it is covered by a fibrous capsule. So that is the innermost layer of the kidney. It is surrounded by a fibrous capsule. It is a thin membrane which is closely investing the kidney and it is lining the renal sinus also. Normally it can be striped off from the kidney but in certain diseases it becomes adherent and cannot be striped. So the innermost layer is the fibrous capsule. Now outer to the fibrous capsule you can have an area which is known as the perinephric perinephric fat area. So this area is the perinephric fat area. So the next area is next covering is the perinephric fat. So this is actually a layer of adipose tissue lying outside the fibrous capsule. It is the thickest at the borders of the kidney and it is filling up the extra space in the renal sinus. Okay, this perinephric fat is located between the fibrous capsule and the renal fascia. It is located between the fibrous capsule, sorry, fibrous capsule and renal fascia. It is composed of the adipose tissue and the space is also known as the space of garota or space of garota. garota. So what is space of garota? It is a perinephric fat area uh, which is actually a covering of the kidney which is located between the fibrous capsule and the renal fascia. So it is abundant along the borders of the kidney and it is a content of the renal sinus also. Now the next covering is the renal fascia which is very important that is the renal fascia which is very important. Renal fascia. So what is this a renal fascia? The renal fascia is the next covering. So actually the renal fascia has got an anterior part. So this is the anterior part of the renal fascia. 
so this is the anterior part so renal fascia has got an anterior part and the posterior layer it has got an anterior layer and a posterior layer so the anterior layer is thin and it is also known as the fascia of told it told it and the posterior layer is thick and it is known as the fascia of sucker candle sucker candle sucker candle so you have got an anterior layer and you have got a posterior layer of the renal fascia here so when you look laterally laterally this anterior and posterior layer will fuse each other at the lateral border of the kidney and they become continuous with the fascia transversalis okay at the and lateral aspect of the kidney the anterior and posterior layer of renal fascia will fuse and becomes continuous with the transversalis fascia now medially what happens medially the anterior layer goes like this and it passes in front of the kidney and also the renal vessels and becomes continuous with a similar layer of the opposite renal fascia in front of the iota and inferior vena cava it becomes continuous with the renal fascia of the opposite side and what happens to the posterior layer the posterior layer it is covering the back of the kidney and uh, renal vessels and it is blending with the suas fascia so it is blending with the suas fascia and it is attached to the body of lumbar vertebrae like this so and there is a deep stratum of the fascia which is connecting the anterior and posterior layer medially so medially the anterior and posterior layer are connected by a deep stratum of the fascia so thereby closing the perinephric space on the medial spine so that is the renal fascia now what happens to the renal fascia above the kidney and below the kidney so here i am drawing the posterior abdominal wall uh, like this so here i am drawing the posterior abdominal wall this is a separate diagram so this is the posterior abdominal wall you can see the diaphragm here okay and below that you are able to see the diaphragmatic fascia so this is the diaphragm and this is the posterior abdominal wall abdominal wall so I am drawing the kidney here so if you look at the renal fascia here that this is the anterior layer of the renal fascia and this is the posterior layer of renal fascia so now the, at the upper pole of this kidney so you are having the suprarenal gland here so at the upper pole of the kidney this two layer that is the anterior layer and the posterior layer of renal fascia they fuse each other and they again split to enclose the suprarenal gland but according to older concept this will again fuse each other but according to newer concept it is not fusing each other so after splitting and covering the suprarenal like this it is open okay it is not fusing again and what happens to this layer what happens to the anterior layer on the right side and on the left side so on the right side the anterior layer okay this is the anterior layer so anterior layer of fascia on the right kidney it fuses with the inferior coronary layer and bare area of liver inferior coronary layer and bare area of liver on the right side so what happens to the anterior layer of renal fascia on the left side so on the left side it is fusing with fuses with the gastrophrenic ligament gastrophrenic ligament so that is the difference between the anterior layer so now what happens to the posterior layer we can see that the posterior layer uh, on both left and left right kidney the posterior layer of the fascia is fusing with the fascia of the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall so the posterior layer is fusing with fusing with the fascia muscles of 
fuses with the fascia of muscles of which are muscles vas major quadratus lamborum okay so that is how the fusion of the renal fascia occurs now what happens inferiorly to the fascia and inferiorly these two layers that is anterior and posterior layers do not fuse and they extend downwards along the ureter and are finally lost in the extra peritoneal tissue of iliac fossa so that is how the fusion of the renal fascia takes place so the renal fascia has got an anterior layer which is thin known as a fascia of toilet and a posterior layer which is thick known as a fascia of succocanthal so both these layers will fuse at the lateral border of the kidney and becomes continuous with the transosalis fascia so on the medial aspect the anterior layer extends and it blends with the fascia of the opposite side and the posterior layer it fuses with the psoas fascia and attach to the body of the lumbar vertebrae now the anterior and posterior layer are joined medially by the deep strata of the fascia now what is the extent of this anterior and posterior layer in the upper pole and lower pole of the kidney so the anterior layer and posterior layer of renal fascia fuse in the upper pole they again split and it is covering the suprarenal but it becomes open again so they do not fuse again the anterior layer on the right side it becomes it blends with the inferior coronary layer and the bare area of the liver whereas on the left side the anterior layer it fuses with the gastrophrenic ligament so what happens in the posterior layer of renal fascia it is posterior layer fuses with the fascia of muscles of the posterior abdominal wall like a psoas major and the quadratus lumbar so that is all about the renal fascia now the next layer next covering of the kidney is the layer which is located between the renal fascia and the thoracolumbar fascia the structure which have drawn in green color Uh, covering the psoas major and the quadratus lumborum is the thoracolumbar fascia so between the renal fascia and the thoracolumbar fascia you can see an area here so this area is known as the paranephric fat area so that is the paranephric fat paranephric fat so this area is located between the renal fascia and the thoracolumbar fascia and thoracolumbar fascia so and it is abundant on the posterior aspect of the kidney and the lower part of the kidney so which are the covering of the kidney from this picture it is from inner to outside so from inner to outside it is covered by the fibrous capsule which is closely investing the kidney okay that is the fibrous capsule so outer to that you have the perinephric fat area which is located between the fibrous capsule and the renal fascia now you have the renal fascia which has got an anterior and posterior layer and the blending of the two layers i have discussed now the outermost covering is the paranephric fat area which is located between the renal fascia and the thoracolumbar fascia it is most abundant along the posterior aspect and the lower part of the kidney so which are the coverings of the kidney fibrous capsule the perinephric fat area renal fascia and the paranephric fat area so i will labeling here the innermost is the fibrous capsule outer to that you have the perinephric fat area outer to that you have the renal fascia and outermost layer as the this layer is the paranephric fat so these are the coverings of the kidney so that is all about the kidney so this is the first part of the video regarding the kidney we will discuss more about the kidney in the second part of this video so thank you for watching this video to see more videos on my channel please subscribe the channel thank you